Right. Um, hi, uh, we are Steve, uh, Jeremy, and Mike, and uh, our uh, presentation is on the power of love. Uh, not really. Uh, it's on the I power of wearables. In my head now, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's about fostering car and bicycle understanding via technology. And this is where this is going to get interesting because obviously. Chapter one is about the tragedy of traffic in Luxembourg. So you've got uh, the Bard himself, and he's Bard because he's sitting in a car. Um, when you look at traffic in Luxembourg, and if this thing ever works, you could send that. Maybe uh, there. Uh, that's traffic in the States. Uh, it's traffic in Luxembourg. It's pretty much everywhere that you see that visible picture. Um, what it leads to is, is this, because we don't have segregated bicycle infrastructure from, from cars. So you get a lot of conflict. From the cyclist perspective, you get scenes like these, or these, or even these. And I don't need to tell you how dangerous this is. Um, but that's basically how I feel when I'm on the bike in the, in the city. Um, but let's now empathize, let's put ourselves into the shoes of the motorist. Um, for the motorist, this is the quintessential um, biker. He's slow and horrible and drinking tea and not paying attention. Or worse, even a cyclist is always, you know, like sheep in a, in a pack. You cannot bypass them, they're everywhere. My god, horrible. Just horrible, slow people. <laughs> and, and that's the reaction you get from the car driver. So we thought of it. Um, how do we how do we how do we get um, around this very very sad situation that one side of traffic is annoyed with the other, um, and that's where chapter two comes in the solution to everything. It's obviously love, right? So we try to bring a bit of car traffic, bike traffic, life's love into uh, into the fray here. Um, enough eighties music. Um, so, how do we approach that very, very idealistic, um, you know, meta-level thing on a concrete basis? So we said, okay, we try to bring love and understanding to all road users through the marvelous and utterly unbelievable powerful <coughs> abilities opening themselves up to you through technology, while gently educating motorists that their views, not necessarily the only valid one, and gently bringing about a behavioral change um, that's there's, that there's space for cyclists in Luxembourg, in the infrastructure, and that in fact using the car makes you so slow. So, back to the motorist's view, that's us. But we really think, and, and I think the cyclists know that, we can whiz through traffic. We're really fast, actually. So, while the motorists say traffic is really dense, they're creating their own problem, and, um, and we have a solution for that. But let's get back to technology. So how do, we, how do we bring that message across? Okay, we need to measure, right? So we need to somehow come to a point where we compare, um, uh, gather data, compare it, and then uh, have insights that lead to actions. Um, this is where Steve comes in. Steve um, is an expert in wearables on something called the Ardu Arduino platform, which is a small bit of technology by which you can um, basically interconnect a whole range of sensors and get a whole uh, range of outputs. Um, what happens in there is a wonderful mystery magic that I don't understand, but Steve does. Um, so we started off with an idea for a t-shirt, and obviously on the left-hand side we said, okay, we're going to put everything in there. Speed limits, it's going to scan the number plate, uh, it's going to have left and right, but we, we turned it down to, um, to, to something more simple, which is how fast am I, cyclist, going versus the average car speed in Luxembourg? And that's the problem. There is no average car speed data for Luxembourg. So we sat down, we averaged standard travel times, north, east, west, south, and on the diagonal, at 8.30 in the morning on a weekday, using Google Maps, and it actually comes up at 70 kilometers per hour. And then we built our prototype. Um, and that's the component, and that's us, and that's Jeremy wearing the finished prototype of uh, a shirt that shows real time the speed of uh, the biker vis a vis this average speed limit of 17 kilometers an hour. Obviously, it's in test mode there, um, 
that's the real thing. And uh, last slide, before, I need to cut now, but we, if we had more time and resources, this is what we will do. And I'll reach you, let you read for that last slide. Thank you. GPS. So basically, uh, we have hooked up a, a small GPS sensor, which is already in there. And um, so the idea is, when you go out, you actually have your real uh, your real speed when when you cycle, and this goes then dynamically uh, up and down. And um, we have anticipated some issues, of course. Imagine it's dark in here; you're not going to see the message. So that's where uh, another technology comes in, which is um, electroluminescent uh, wiring, which is just the wire that. that is very uh, bright, so then you could sort of go into dark mode and, uh, and have this on your back and still um, have the message. And the idea is, think of the shirt as a template. So basically, uh, this would be sort of, um, you could take that away and you could also, uh, my pollution, and then the car's pollution, with a pollution sensor, for instance. So it's, it's kind of this activist uh, t-shirt in a certain sense as well. And, and why not make uh, something completely different out of it with a similar spirit? Super nice concept. Uh, do we have an idea of unit price currently, just to know how we can be easily accessible to... It was to nine, nine euros for the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Arduino Flora approximately comes in at 30 euros. The GPS is really expensive. It is around um, around 40 to 50 euros, uh, depending where you buy it. But if you have more time and a little bit more resources, you're going to find a board that has um, either Bluetooth already on it, so you could talk to the phone, uh, which is ideally what you want to do, because then you can also send data directly to the internet, which then is just really great, because you could have much more. And then if we talk internet, we talk like data gathering, graphing, and all the rest of it. Did you also think of uh, passing messages for the um, cars, for example? Uh, place, there are some places we are more dangerous to just say, okay, please don't uh, uh, turn left or all this stuff? We, we did. The issue with that, obviously, you need a much bigger protection space, uh, sort of a, you know, the size of a 10 inch tablet. And with those sizes, if you have a dot matrix display, it rapidly becomes quite expensive. So there's limits to what is feasible, but um, things like pinpointing information, say, on, an, on, on a map, for instance, feeding back uh, dangerous black spots for traffic, that would be feasible. But also you need, uh, on a t-shirt, you need one main information. If you have too much information, it's not really good. Yeah. And, uh, but we think about something else, for example, when you are in a, a speed limit station mode, like less than 30 kilometers, this could be written on the shirt, like he, we are here in a limited uh, uh, area. So, uh, yeah. And in, in five to ten years, we will either have a fabric that you can use as a screen, or just something very, very thin, like paper thin, that you can put on the back, which can serve as your screen. But that's five to ten years probably away. But that would obviously then be the technological choice, but now it's not, not feasible yet. The existing prototype but is off the roof. I see clearly the alternative. Thank you, thank you for that. What would be your need currently today to make that a reality on a little series? We say that you have some needs <coughs> of resources. What would be basically a need? Uh, we have today uh, a startup in Amsterdam. Uh, that could be uh, already interested uh, to, uh, to work with us. They already have the technology, and, uh, uh, but uh, we probably need more uh, work to do to, to prototype, to, uh, to test different type of ID, and to go on the street and test it. And, perfect and, code. Uh, yeah, perfect the code, and uh, also I think we have a lake of uh, design. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, Resources. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, in the end, we're sort of engineers, so we're, we're, this is, without blowing our 
myself too much. Raft is really good design for engineers. So <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's so little time. So, that, but that is obviously that you want to make it more more attractive. So um, that's something that that needs to be worked on with other people. Yeah, and if Jeremy hadn't worked on the design for, for quite some time, I think it would have been much worse if we both would have done the design. <laughs> Probably Comic Sans or something. <laughs> With a wooden background. To the next yeah. All right, thank you. Goodbye. Nice.